Hi, so uh, this is a case of a uh, patient who is a diabetic and uh, the pupil was dilating uh, beyond uh, 5, 5.5 uh, millimeters. It is a soft cataract. So I uh, decided to go about uh, doing my fake emulsification uh, using a uh, stop and chop technique with the uh, Gupta ring. So I'm taking my corneal incision using a 2.8 uh, millimeter uh, keratome. This uh, procedure is done under local anesthesia and uh, normally I take uh, two side ports for my bimanual uh, irrigation aspiration. So I have uh, placed the Gupta ring into the injector and uh, with the help of my second instrument I am uh, pushing the uh, ring into the anterior chamber. So my idea was to get the uh, leading uh, ring into uh, underneath the iris at uh, 6 o'clock. But uh, unfortunately, it did not go in, so I just uh, pushed the entire ring into the anterior chamber. I've uh, injected some viscoelastic and then I'm uh, dialing the ring to place the rings underneath the uh, iris. So, with the help of my uh, second instrument, I try to adjust the ring underneath the iris, and uh, between each uh, step, I inject some viscoelastic to protect the endothelium and uh, keep the uh, anterior chamber deep. So again I inject some viscoelastic and I uh, rotate the ring to get into a comfortable position to position the uh, last ring underneath the iris. So it's a relatively uh, simple uh, procedure and uh, uh, we need to be extra careful uh, not to rupture the uh, anterior lens capsule and uh, repeated entry can also disturb the uh, desmans membrane so we need to be extra careful about that. So with the help of my uh, second instrument, I let go of the uh, first and uh, I place the last ring underneath the iris. So uh, the Gupta ring is placed, then I inject some uh, viscoelastic and go ahead with my uh, capsular excess. Here I'm going from the uh, side port using a 26 gauge uh, cystitome. So I'm not trying to make a very large rexus uh, as the cataract is uh, soft and uh, I keep the rexus margin within the uh, pupillary area uh, so when I notice uh, the rexus going slightly away I try to bring it in and uh, try to achieve a good round rexus. So a good uh, hydro dissection is uh, important. As you can see the fluid wave uh, passing from underneath the uh, lens and then I push the lens to reduce the internal anterior pressure. And uh, here what I do is I inject some viscoelastic and uh, from the uh, side port with the help of a dialer I check for the nucleus rotation to make sure that I've had a good uh, hydro dissection. So once I'm satisfied with my uh, nucleus rotation I go ahead with my fake emulsification. So uh, stop and chop technique is the preferred technique for uh, cases with uh, soft cataracts. So here uh, my aim is to achieve a good uh, deep uh, trench. I'm not trying to go all the way towards the uh, 6 o'clock position. So what I do is uh, I get um, I, I achieve a good uh, trench on one half and then I rotate the nucleus uh, 180 degrees and uh, get the trench on the other half. So after rotating the nucleus, I trench the other half of the nucleus and uh, once I'm satisfied with the trench where I can see a good frontal low, I go ahead and get crack the nucleus. So the nucleus is cracked and then I go into my FACO2 mode. I hold the nucleus, get a good vacuum, hold the nucleus and chop it into smaller quadrants. So when one half of the uh, nucleus is uh, emulsified, I rotate the nucleus 180 degrees towards the uh, FACO needle and uh, chop the uh, other half of the nucleus.
So uh, I'm left with the uh, epinucleus. So we need to be extra careful in uh, this step as uh, the chances of causing a piece event is uh, highest during uh, this step. So once I'm done with that, I uh, go ahead with my bimanual uh, irrigation aspiration. I'm comfortable using a bimanual irrigation aspiration as uh, you can uh, aspirate uh, cortex uh, comfortably from all the uh, quadrants. So I change the ports and then go from the other end and try to aspirate from the other half. So here there was some uh, cortex left at uh, 6 o'clock. So uh, I go and remove the uh, cortex but unfortunately uh, some amount of cortex uh, wasn't coming probably because my side port was uh, leaking and uh, the uh, AC kept uh, flattening. So what I decided to do was uh, to inject scholastic and go ahead with my uh, IOL uh, insertion and then remove the uh, cortex. So this is a hydrophobic uh, spherical uh, intraocular lens which is a uh, So with the help of my second instrument I push the intraocular lens into the uh, bag So normally at this stage you would uh, remove the uh, cupcaring but uh, first I need to aspirate the uh, cortex at uh, 6 o'clock so I do the cortex aspiration. Uh, now I can comfortably remove the cortex because I know the lens is there. So once I'm done with the uh, cortex aspiration I inject some uh, viscoelastic again and uh, then remove the uh, cupcaring. So the removing part is uh, extremely easy. and. Uh, all we need to do is just uh, bring it, uh, bring the ring uh, just towards the pupillary margin and then it comes out very easily. So uh, once it is out in the anterior chamber bag, here I'm trying to get the uh, uh, ring near the uh, incision so it's much easier for me to remove. So with the help of uh, McPherson's forceps I remove the uh, Gupta ring. So uh, once I'm done with that I go ahead with my uh, Bosco wash. So uh, Gupta ring uh, is a uh, relatively easy procedure, especially for uh, beginners and uh, we don't need to make multiple posts like uh, iris hooks and uh, in cases where uh, pupil is not dilating enough, uh, it is advisable to use uh, pupil expanders and uh, Gupta ring is one such uh, expander which is comparatively uh, easy compared to other uh, expanders. So we need to be extra careful uh, when uh, putting the ring not to rupture the anterior capsule and uh, keep injecting viscoelastic between each step. And uh, this patient was doing great post-operatively day one. He had a clear cornea, vision was 6 by 9 and uh, was extremely happy and pupil was myotic. So uh, thank you for watching.